Um, we're here to announce uh, the final action of the lengthy controversy involving the ORI Anui Nui Hale issue. Many of you who have um, been part of the media have, there's a lot of articles that have been written over the last few years about the controversy and HUD's um, investigation into compliance of this organization. And, uh, and so to just recap the history so that everybody knows what we're doing here. Uh, the latest history uh, in May 2013 had demanded that the city repay almost $8 million in grant money, uh, which was given to ORI, uh, ORI Anui Nui Hale for its Aloha Gardens project in Wahiwa. That demand was based upon HUD's view that the city failed to properly monitor the grant and variety of conflict of interest due to campaign spending and other types of compliance issues. In September 2013, the city responded to this uh, and it pretty much uh, offered a corrective action plan and offered to pay $1.8 million to resolve the matter. The HUD came back the same month within days and accepted our corrective action plan and demanded $2.9 million to resolve that. In February of this year, the city uh, informed HUD that because it had been unable to reach any type of agreement with the subrecipient, ORI Anui Nui Hale, that it was unable to resolve the matter with HUD. And so that's where it laid for months and months and months until finally HUD uh, decided that it was going to clear this issue off its books and it, uh, it had issued an administrative order requiring the city to pay $2.9 million. The good part about that, so that's the bad news and the good news, the good news is that $2.9 million is a lot less than almost $8 million. And we're very grateful that HUD uh, was uh, appreciative of the city's really good faith action to implement all the corrective action and to bring its program into into a better fiscal as well as um, administrative compliance plan. The Also the good news about the order is that HUD made some decisions as to how the money ought to be spent and that's why you see these gentlemen uh, with me because that is the best news and the the HUD looked at some of the needs of the city. They actually did some due diligence on their part, and they decided to to award the money, uh, order that the money be spent in a couple of ways. The most significant way was to pay for the Haula Fire Station and to invest in that really great community project. So they issued the order includes 1.4 million dollars for land acquisition and the design of the fire station. And I'm gonna let the fire guys talk about um, why this is such a great thing. The other part of the decision uh, ordered almost uh, a little over $900,000 to rehabilitate one of the city's properties and that's Pawahi Hale, which is will soon be going under a management uh, contract with uh, Mental Health Kokua in Chinatown and they will run that program as a safe haven as well as putting in some of the city's housing first uh, people in there. And the money allows us to do the remodeling of Pawahi Hale, which will include a hygiene center for the homeless in Chinatown, which has been demanded and long awaited by the, the, that community, as well as uh, renovating some of the common areas. And I'm gonna let Mr. Sasamore talk about some of the things that we're doing there. If we still have money left after that, we can spend the money on two other city projects, and that's Kanoa Apartments and, um, why am I forgetting the last one? Bachelor's, Bachelor's Quarters. Quarters. Bachelor's Quarters in Eva. <laughs> and photos of that are in your press packet. And those, the best part about all of this is these three properties are rental units that serve the city's lowest income population. And they're the ones that are in need of a lot of renovation. And, and the city's deferred maintenance has not been able to keep up with the demands of these properties. So we're very grateful that HUD picked these properties out uh, to be beneficiaries of this funding. And then the last part of it 
is a little over five hundred thousand dollars which will be used to assist the city in implementing its strategic affordable housing program and uh, our housing first initiative and for those of you who've covered some of the actions of the of the city you know that we are uh, forming a new strategic development office which will be used to manage the assets of the city and primarily will be involved in in spending some of the housing first and affordable housing money that the council put into the city's budget for FY15 nearly 50 million dollars as well as using some of our city properties to build affordable housing and this the staff of this office is much needed ever since 1998 when the city disbanded its housing office and we have not done any type of redevelopment uh, at all since that period of time and we have a number of city parcels that are just prime for um, development into affordable housing so this office will be staffed with people who have the background and expertise in order to do that type of development so this money is very welcome to meet this great need of the city so that's the the use of the 2.9 million dollars there are consequences and things that the city has to do with ORI a new um, or I age and that requires them uh, there are several facets of that the first one is that they will be required to maintain f a daily target of 50 users of the wellness center they've been complying with that in the last year or so so we don't anticipate that to be a difficulty and that the second part of it is that the compliance will be for five years instead of 20 years and so for, we're grateful that HUD recognized that the five-year requirement would be sufficient to meet the national objective and the CDBG requirements. And the third component is that HUD decided to remove any requirements for uh, CDBG compliance on the Pineapple Camp. You may remember that the Pineapple Camp was initially built for seniors and it has never been successful used for that purpose and that was the bone of contention between HUD and the city um, over the last few years and I think this is a very good win for the ORIH and so it allows them to move forward with their with their beautiful facility and use it for a variety of purposes serving the community which I'm confident that they will do we have not entered into a settlement discussion an agreement with ORIH as of today and we're hoping and optimistic that we will still be able to do that we know that they are very um, anxious to resolve all of this and we also believe that they would like to put this past and move forward and get on with um, continuing their program so um, we hope that that will be uh, accomplished down the road so if you have any questions <coughs> I'm happy to um, otherwise I'd like to have these guys talk about the what we're going to use the money for and the Ho'ula Fire Station. I'd like to start with Deputy Chief Kamara. And we're very excited. We're finally getting a chance to move forward on our fire station. If you take a look at some of the photos to my right over here, you can see our fire station is pretty dilapidated. And we've been working very hard and diligently with the administration. We'd like to thank the administration and the housing and urban development folks. Also, Ms. James for assisting us in getting our project going. Our new fire station will allow us They'll move us actually right out of the in flood and inundation, tsunami inundation zones and provide us with a uh, new facility and some training tower over there that we can actually have our personnel train in their first in area. By doing this, they don't have to leave the Haula area and go to the, our training center at Valkenburg. They can do a lot of the training in-house and allow them to remain in the Haula district to continue their coverage. It'll, besides helping Haula, it'll also help Ka'ava and um, the Kahuku Fire Station because they don't have a training tower with them also. So they can come to the Ha'ula Fire Station and do their training there. This will allow them to remain closer to their first in area and provide much better coverage. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Ross Sasamura. I'm the Director and Chief Engineer of the Department of Facility Maintenance. And the Department of Facility Maintenance is presently overseeing some renovation work out at Powahi Hale, located at 126 North Powahi Street. The renovations at the moment are focused on the first floor area of Powahi Hale. And as Managing Director Shin mentioned, 
It includes the construction of a men's and women's hygiene center, which basically consists of a shower unit as well as a water closet and a lavatory, which will be open to the public for use by the public. It will be supported by the programs that are actually going to be running within Pawahi Hale. So the remainder of the renovations are focusing on converting some of the spaces on the first floor to office spaces and other meeting spaces that the service providers will use to provide services to homeless people and other people in need in the downtown Chinatown area. Great, thanks. Thank you. The city took fault early on. We acknowledge that our uh, monitoring was less than satisfactory and that's why we in, uh, uh, put into place a very ex extensive corrective action program to bring everything in line. One of the things that HUD did early on as part of their uh, 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 demand of, of the city back in 2013, and that's to provide us with technical assistance. So they sent in an organization that actually went in and, and looked at everything we did. They came up with some recommendations. Unfortunately, because of sequestration and other federal funds, they were not able to complete their project, um, uh, and so they issued a, a report that was not totally um, complete with, with respect to the scope of work that they had intended to do. And they made some recommendations, and we're looking at those recommendations and trying to implement those that make the most sense. Can you detail maybe the top recommendations that you have? The top recommendation was to merge the CDBG functions. Right now, it's the responsibility for monitoring is housed in two departments, the Department of Community Services and um, um, Budget and Fiscal Services. And, uh, and they suggested that, they rec strongly recommended that it be merged together. And we are definitely looking at that merger. It will require um, uh, consultation with the unions because they're all um, unionized employees that will be affected. But we are definitely moving in that direction. The, uh, the, the fact that uh, this wasn't be being done, was that at the, uh, the uh, community services uh, level or was that just uh, blanket city policy overall? Well, I think that what they found was the, it, having two departments responsible for different, area, different aspects of the CDBG compliance and monitoring function led to a lot of missteps and miscommunication. And it took more effort for us to streamline that level of communication between the two departments. And so that's why they suggested that the departments be merged. Or not the departments, but the function so be merged in one department. So is that going to be part of the, uh, the new office, the new housing office? No, that will not be part of the strategic development office. It will probably be part of one department or the other. Ember, how many, uh, how much funding from HUD went to the Pineapple Camp, and what's it being used for now? Uh, you mean of the original seven point nine million dollars? Yeah, that's a really good question. I don't know if I have the answer for for that, because that was one of the disputes that we had with RIH. They claim that most of the money went to build the wellness center and other parts of it, and that only a very small part of it went to construct the pineapple camp and that's why they felt that they did not have to comply with the national objectives for how they ran the, the pineapple camp. I think the undisputed part of it was the money did go to pay for the infrastructure, the sewer connections um, between the facilities and, uh, and, and I think that everyone agreed with that but part of the problem and why we are we found ourselves in this situation was part of the monitoring was not sufficient in looking at how the money was being spent. So when we conducted our investigation a year ago, it was difficult to determine how much money was used to pay for which part of the operate of the construction. And so how's the facility being used now? I think it was being rented out for weddings and all sorts of things that were not in line with HUD requirements. Right. Well, until the this the HUD order came down, which excused RIH from uh, compliance, they were supposed to continue to use it for seniors. That has been a challenge for them. In some months, they were successful in meeting that obligation. I think it was, do you remember how many people they had to serve? It was only like 10 or 15 or a very small number a month, yeah. And some months they were able to make it and others they weren't. So they were still struggling. Um, 
They claim, though, that they stopped using it for uh, commercial purposes. Do you feel like this agreement is really letting ORI off the hook? I mean, they're not paying anything. They're able to continue their operations, as it seems like they had desired. Um, it's a lot of taxpayers' money. It is a lot of taxpayers' money, and that's why the city did not settle with HUD. This is an administrative order. It is not a settlement. Because we found that in good faith and our responsibility to the taxpayers, we could not settle it unless we got some type of um, financial commitment from ORIH that, that accepted some level of ownership in what happened. And we're still hopeful that that can happen. We are still hopeful that now that the Pineapple Camp can operate without any CDB jurisdictions, that it can be revenue generating, and that they will look favorably with some kind of reimbursement to the city. And have you had, um, are they even coming to the table in terms of sitting down with you guys? Are you, can you characterize the, um, the, the current state of negotiations? Well, I can characterize the state of negotiations as non-existent, but I think that we've had a good relationship with the attorneys for, for ORIH, and they are, have indicated a willingness to bring their client to engage in further discussions. It just has not been scheduled yet. So um, is, does the city hold any uh, uh, authority to, to, to compel ORIAH to, to, to come up with any sort of funding here? Well, we do have, under our contract, we do have the ability to take action against them, and that would certainly be something that we would look at as a very, very last resort. I don't think that litigation or adversarial um, type of uh, action serves the community's interest. I think uh, maybe we need a court counsel or somebody who explains what, 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 what is the authority to, to be able to do that? Where, where does that stem from? Well, it's, it's the, the agreement with the, the city under the subrecipient agreement. So it's the terms of the, upon which the grant was awarded. And that governs the relationship when there is a breach of the agreement. Can you say the city's position in terms of how much of that debt the city feels uh, or our age is? is to, to pay. Well, I think that's one of the issues that we have to resolve, and that's why resolution and settlement with RIH is much more preferable to litigation, because in any type of litigation there will be finger pointing and blame. They will accuse us of not giving them clear direction, and we will say that they didn't do whatever they were supposed to do. And I don't think that it's in anyone's best interest to have a court decide this issue. I think it should be resolved between the parties. Does ORI have any um, contracts with the city currently? No. Or are they grant recipients? In no, any other not that I'm aware of. Managing Director, who was uh, head of community services at the time that the, the grant was awarded, and uh, did that person uh, knowingly um, uh, mislead the parameters of the grant, or was it just a matter of fact that the, uh, the rules of the processes of the grants weren't ironclad as, as you folks are, are in the process of doing now? I actually don't know who was head of DCS at the time that the grant was awarded because that was like 15 years ago. I'm just not remembering who it was. Uh, so I can't answer that question. Uh, the uh, the other part of your question, though, is I think that uh, in my earlier uh, press conference when we first talked about how we were handling this, that must have been last year, I said there was a lot of blame to go around. There were a lot of um, management and compliance in monitoring inconsistencies, and 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 that the looseness of the organization did allow for the possibility, the possibility, I didn't say it happened, but the possibility of external influences coming into play. And that's the only conclusion that we came to. We did not come to any conclusion that there was actually any interference. Have you uh, gained any more clarity on the loan forgiveness agreement that it was one point some million dollars? It seemed incredibly abnormal. Um, 
uh, measure for the city to take, and who was responsible for um, signing off on that? Was it Chair Ernie Martin? Well, that was discussed in our earlier uh, press conference, and we have not uh, conducted any further investigation after that. And I think you, those who were there at the press conference, recall that our investigation indicated that that there was it was inconclusive as to who signed off on the loan, the forgiveness of the loan. Certainly, there was program irregularity because there was no defined process in place at the time. We have since corrected that. Uh, and the you can go back and read all of your articles on this issue because we don't not, none of the facts have changed, but the only thing we were able to find was a post-it note that indicated that the mayor was um, in agreement with the action, but as to who signed off on it, the final decision we've never been able to track that down. I think you guys did more investigation on that than we did. <laughs> that was Mayor Hanneman at the time. That's correct. Um, and, and Chair though. Martin, just so that you know, he was head of the um, Office of Special Projects. On the, uh, the whole uh, fire station, as you know, remember the uh, council uh, did not set aside any funds in the last uh, budget cycle. And Chin James, who owns one of the parcels where the station is supposed to be built on, has been adamant in her uh, defiance of the eminent domain. She's taking you folks to court. Um, has uh, is this uh, HUD administrative order uh, been floated by her? Is she now accepting the offer to sell her land, or can you yes, update us on that? Yes, we have resolved the dispute with June James. Can you tell us how much she's getting for that parcel? She is getting the original uh, amount in the condemnation action was five hundred and twenty-one thousand dollars, and under this order, she receives an additional four hundred thousand dollars. Why the additional four hundred? According to the HUD order, uh, it was to resolve the dispute. The HUD decided on four hundred thousand. The HUD order specifies to, and you you have it in your packets, and so you can read the language in there. But HUD felt that it was in the best interest of the community to resolve the dispute because it had been going on for thirteen years, and the fire station was very much needed in the community. And the cost of litigation and the delay outweighed um, the insistence on sticking with the original appraised value of the property. And this is uh, a settlement amount that uh, Ms. James has agreed to? Yes. Is that because HUD took into account the uh, attorney fees that had been spent by Ms. James? No, I'm sure they did not. And then uh, will there be uh, any uh, further council approval needed for construction of the fire station to move forward? Or? Absolutely. The, uh, the HUD order uh, all, uh, 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 allots a uh, million dollars for planning and design work. And uh, the, um, uh, any further investment into the fire station will have to come through council approval in a, as a CIP project. Do you expect the uh, council to be more uh, uh, amiable to granting it now that June James has cleared her project? Well, we're hopeful that they will see that this is a good project for the community. Certainly the 20,000 signatures that you collected or however many <laughs> signatures you got and all the visits to the neighborhood boards indicate that this is very much needed and desired by the community. And as you can see, you didn't show all the bad pictures. That's the locker room. <coughs> and uh, you can see how bad it is. And that's, you know, the entire, one of the I mean, it's just falling apart, the back of the station. And uh, the tower is all rust, and, and it's just condemned. It's not functional. I mean, it's in really poor condition. We're not even sure if the fire station is going to be able to survive until the completion of construction. So. This uh, excuse me, it's not a settlement, right? So well, the settlement with Chun James is a settlement, right. but the the two point nine million dollars that HUD is a, is an administrative order. This administrative order, very creative and, and sure to have taken a lot of uh, work. Um, whose idea was it to incorporate all these different items? Well, the the I think that was initiated by HUD, and they they asked us what are what the, we had any ideas of what we wanted to spend money on and. I sat down in a room and I just rattled off a whole bunch of things off the top of my head and they picked the ones that they thought was the most appropriate and you know HUD 
Mark Chandler watches our council meetings <laughs> on Olelo. So he is very much knows everything that's going on in the city. <laughs> and so he knows the controversy over the Ha'ula fire station. And, uh, and he knows how important this is for the community. And, and, and we're just really grateful that HUD took as much of an interest in the projects that we need done and identified the ones that, that were really important to us. And remind us the overall cost of the fire station, the new fire station. No, what did you estimate, Lionel? It's about, overall cost would be about $9 million. It's about 15,000 square feet. That includes uh, purchase, planning, design, and of course construction. Yes, the construction of okay. overall cost, yes. Amber, um, I know the initial settlement was some $8 million with ORI, but um, what was the total amount of HUD funding that ORI got for this? It was $7.9 million. Seven point nine. That was total. Yes. They were asking for a right. Amber, uh, remind us uh, why the uh, the mayor, uh, Mayor Caldwell, uh, recused himself from this process. Mayor Caldwell recused himself because um, he was a recipient, unknowing recipient of uh, a campaign donation by Susanna Chung, and as you may recall, one of HUD's uh, initial uh, complaints against the city was their view that the fact that over $100,000 had been donated by Susanna Chung over 16 years, presented a conflict of interest. And to, to various candidates. To various candidates, right. Just $500 to this one. <laughs> right. And we gave all of that to you in the original press conference, so you still have that information. Could you elaborate on how the funding for the Strategic Development um, Office is going to be allocated or how it's going to be used, and is this a permanent office intended to be a long-term? Well, I hope it has a long-term life. It certainly has a short-term life because for us to be able to develop some of these projects, it's going to take several years to get underway. The city is not going to build it. We will engage in public-private partnerships and with the community and developers in the community to build it. We're not going to build it like we did in the 60s and 70s and 80s. Uh, and so, uh, so we'll be probably doing more construction management uh, and management of, of, of the contracts, uh, construction contracts. So, uh, so I don't have a permanent vision of it, but I think that the the need for it is so critical right now, with all that we need to do in affordable housing and to make sure and, and TOD and all the catalytic projects that we're working on in, in the transit-oriented districts. Uh, so, so certainly the, it is a critical need. The funding for it is no different from what I explained in council, and that what I didn't tell them at the time, because I couldn't, because we had not resolved it with the whole fire station, and that um, is that part of the money will come for the Strategic Development Office will come from this HUD grant and that will be dedicated positions for affordable housing and our housing first. Oh, all the funding? For no, not all the funding will come. Some of the funding will have to come from general funds and, re and reallocation of resources. But the staff that are involved in working on affordable housing and our housing first initiative can be funded through this HUD money. How, how long do you anticipate that funding for and from? Well, it's uh, it's over five hundred thousand dollars, and so we'll it'll it'll probably be gone in a, probably a, a year or maybe a year and a half. So this is to fund all the positions. It will not fund all the positions. It will fund a big chunk of the positions, but not all of them. And uh, uh, and we have three years to spend the um, the money in accordance with the administrative order. And when do you expect the office to be staffed, and how are you recruiting for those positions? We're recruiting now, so anybody who wants to apply can do so. We do have two staff members, at the, um, our two top people will be starting in December, early December, so we've already selected them. And was, were the positions advertised, or was it more word of mouth? Well, they're contract positions, so they don't, they're not civil service positions or union positions, so they don't have to be advertised. And we recruited and solicited internally, not internally, but throughout the community, the developer community. 
can you say who they are? I wish I could, but I can't. Not today. Maybe tomorrow, but not today. <laughs> but they are really good people. They are coming um, from government backgrounds, so they're coming from another government agency, and so they're very familiar, and they've all been involved in in land development for their agencies. I met with Council Chair Martin and Chair Kobayashi at two o'clock. Could you uh, explain to us how they how they responded to this one? Well, you'll have to ask them yourself, but my impression of their response was that they were uh, gratified that it was over and that everyone could move forward uh, on this issue, and they were hopeful that ORIAH would um, be amenable to resolution. Does this end all the investigations, or is there another ethics investigation still going on? Oh, yes. The ethics investigation, we don't control. That's, um, that's the Ethics Commission. And uh, that is, I don't know if it's ongoing, but it certainly is still an open case for them. They have not closed it. Anything else? Were there particular, but back to the other question I had. Were there particular points to this plan that either the council chair or budget chair uh, were opposed to? They did not express anything to me. Um, they were, did not express any dissatisfaction or concern over the uh, administrative order or the resolution of the Haula uh, fire station. And I just wanted to clarify, initially HUD had said we want the money back, right? And now yes. they're saying you don't have to return it to us, you can use it for it. Okay, great. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you.